Hi, today I want to talk about the tough questions. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Anita Morjani and welcome to my home. So what do I mean by the tough questions? Every now and then um, I receive questions from people or in the comments of the videos, I get questions where people actually say, how come you don't address those amongst us who are struggling, who are really, really poor, or who are starving, or who can't put food on the table? And, and also people say, you only seem to be talking to other people like yourself, who are, who are blessed, or who at least have a support network, uh, who are not really struggling. So actually, so what I want to say today is I want to address this to the people who are struggling, but of course to everyone. But in my head, I believe my message is for everyone because the reason why I feel blessed today is because I spent a lot of years struggling. I am speaking from the experience of struggling, of struggle. Um, and so let me tell you a little bit about where I'm coming from and why I believe that my message applies to everyone and for, you know, and let me also tell you how to apply it if you're struggling and if you can't put food on the table or with whatever else in life. So first of all, those of you who have read my books, Dying to Be Me or What If This Is Heaven, will know that um, I grew up being bullied for one. The other thing is, the other thing is that um, I was also racially discriminated against. I don't speak about that a lot, but um, when I was a lot younger, about 20 years ago, I used to be an activist against racial discrimination in my country, in the country I lived in, because I was an ethnic minority and I was racially profiled a lot because um, being of Indian ethnicity, when I was growing up and where in the community I lived in, I was an ethnic minority and people of my race were actually looked down upon and treated as second-class citizens. So um, I would be turned away from renting apartments and things like that because people didn't want to rent to uh, people of my ethnicity. So I have dealt with being frustrated, with being angry, with situations like that. Um, the other thing I've dealt with is growing up in a culture where there was tremendous gender disparity. So I've been a second class citizen because just because I was a woman. And there were so many things that pushed me down in my life. And I may not, um, I may not be in that situation anymore. Of course, I'm still the same gender and I'm still the same race, but I, I look at life differently. I've changed my life. So my point is no matter where you are, you can change your life, you can turn it around. And that is why I share my message and I share what I do. And <clears throat> also, after I had the near-death experience, because I had been sick for four years and because my husband Danny had been home taking care of me because he didn't know when I was going to die, so he pretty much stopped going to work. When I came through it, we were both out of a job and we had bills to pay. We had my medical bills to pay and we had all these bills to pay, but we had no job. We had to move from the beautiful apartment we lived in and we had to move to the countryside in a small little humble cottage somewhere out in the middle of nowhere just so that we could make ends meet and figure out what we wanted to do. So I have experienced being flat broke and in debt and, and all these other things. It's just that where I am now is past all of that, but I wouldn't have been able to get through that without knowing what I know today. And that is why I share my message with you. And so what is the message? What is the core or the crux of the message? So let me get to the crux of it today and distill it for you, no matter where in life you are. When I died, and this is the thing, I don't want people to have to die to learn this. I couldn't have been that smart because it took death for me to, to learn this. But when I was on the other realm, I realized that my image of myself, my entire life, had been, had been um, created by the external world, the external community that I was in, the country I lived in, the people, the surroundings 
who I thought I was was created by my environment, if you will. So I felt that I was insignificant because I was a woman. I felt that I was lesser than everyone around me because of my ethnicity. Um, I was bullied for it and so on. And I bought into that thinking. I believed that thinking. And what that thinking does, when you buy into it, when you believe it, it dims your light. And I'm going to go into a little bit more about what it means to dim your light and how to brighten that light. But what it does is it dims your light and it makes you small. And when you're small, you kind of operate from that level. I made myself invisible. So it was very hard to attain, achieve anything because I believed what the external world was reflecting back to me. It was only when I died did I realize that I had actually signed up for a lot of these experiences. I actually, today, I wouldn't trade anything I've experienced because it makes me who I am now and it helps me to know how to deal with so many other things. I mean, so much in the world still hasn't changed. We still see gender disparity and racial discrimination and poverty. But the thing is, my, what I feel that what I want to do is I like to lift up people who listen to me and then they can go on and lift up other people. So here's what I realized when I died. I realized that nobody is more inferior or more superior than anyone else. I was not less than anybody, not anybody. Not, I was not less than any male. I was not less than any guru or spiritual teacher or anybody. And I was not less than any, anyone of any race, of any color, of any ethnicity. We are all that same spark of God. Every single one of us are that same spark of God underneath. And if someone else can't see that in you, that's not your problem. That's their problem. Your job is to see it within yourself. And when you're able to see it within yourself, regardless of what is happening on the outside world, regardless of how the outside world feels about your gender, about your ethnicity, only when you can see it in yourself can you actually change the world. So your job is not about going out and getting angry at people because sometimes people get angry at me. They get angry at me and they say, how is your message helping the poor amongst us? And it's all very well for you to be sitting at home and getting your great meals while people are done. No, that's my point. My point is <clears throat> our job is to help people see the light within. I don't want people to give me their power. I want them to own their power. I'm not asking you to believe in me. I'm asking you to believe in yourself. Okay, so how do you do that? Great question. So here's how, here's my suggestion and I'm gonna give you an analogy. I want you to pretend that you are a light bulb. You know, I always say that your only work is to go out and shine your light as brightly as you can in the world. If you are a light bulb and your light is really dim and your light is off, how are you going to shine your light in the world? How are you gonna help other people? Because, so here's how I want you to think of it. When your light is off, you're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. But when your light is on, it's shining really brightly. And what you're doing when your light is bright, you are enlightening the people around you, including you are helping, you are actually enlightening the people who see race, who, who, um, who actually see gender disparity, race discrimination. In other words, the people who contribute to the problem, when they see you and you are lit as bright as possible, happy as a camper and having um, a good life and striving and thriving, you will actually be able to change the way they view your race, your gender and so on. So how do we keep that light shining? How do we enlighten the world? We enlighten the world by lighting our own selves inside. So going back to you being a bulb, imagine now you're a battery operated bulb. 
So <clears throat> what is it about batteries? The batteries in your devices, in your smartphones, are rechargeable. So you're a rechargeable battery operated bulb. So if you are struggling, if you're struggling to put food on the table, if you're struggling because you're taking care of special needs children, if you're struggling because you are taking care of aging parents or you're dealing with an illness, then you, your bulb, you're getting worn down. And as you get worn down, your bulb is dimming and dimming and dimming. You're not spending any time figuring out how to make that bulb shine brightly. <clears throat> your only obligation to yourself, regardless of your life's conditions, is to figure out what charges your batteries. Because the more you charge your batteries, the brighter your bulb will be. So here's what I would suggest you do, is I suggest no matter what your life's conditions, I'm not asking you to stop caring for your special needs children or your aging parents. I'm not asking you to quit your job, which you hate because it, put, it helps you pay the bills and put food on the table. I'm not asking you to do any of that. Here's what I am asking you though. I'm gonna ask you, what can you do in your life that will charge your batteries? How do you know when your batteries are being charged? You know when you feel love. You know when you feel joy. You know it when you feel passion. When you feel all the good stuff, that is your signal that your batteries are being charged. When your batteries are charged, your light grows brighter. And when your light grows brighter, even when you are doing those things, when you are going to the job you hate, you are actually operating at a different frequency. When you're dealing with people who see the world through a racial lens, you are still going to be operating at a different frequency. When you are at a different frequency, when you're no longer dim, when you're lo no longer invisible, when you're no longer small, when you are at a different frequency, you will see different things coming into your life, different opportunities. The reason why I got to the stage where I was, where I got cancer, was because I allowed the world outside to dictate who I was. I didn't turn inwards. I didn't realize that I am somebody who is as powerful, as magnificent, and as bright as even the brightest shining person out there, the biggest guru, the biggest star. We all are. Nobody is an exception. Nobody. The outside world may try to convince you of that because of your gender, your race, your orientation, whatever, but none of that is true. That's why it's so important to see yourself as the light. See yourself as the light and ask yourself, is my light shining bright or have I allowed the world outside to dim it? That's the question. Have I allowed the world outside to dim my light? How dare they take away my light? How dare I allow themselves to do that? I am a piece of God like everybody else. So this is what, so, so the first exercise I would like to ask you to do um, is really to ask yourself, what floats my boat? What do I love doing? And um, hey, I, do you guys love my hat? I love this hat, it makes me happy. So what floats my boat? Let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually doing, like I love wearing colors. I love reds and pinks and oranges. Many of you know that my favorite color is orange, but actually all colors make me happy. My social media manager, Milena, told me a little story of how somebody asked her niece what her favorite color is, and her niece said, rainbow. And I thought, oh my God, what a smart kid, because that's my favorite color too, rainbow. I love colors. Colors make me happy. So I like to be surrounded by colors, colored clothes, hats, handbags. I love colored handbags. Um, you know, I love spending time with people that make me laugh. I love laughing. I have, I have hobbies that I love to do. I love writing. I love reading. I love being by the ocean. So I want you to think of all the things that you love. Um, 
I love the team of people I work with. I love spending time with them, communicating with them, with Milena, with Roz. You know, I love being with Danny. And so just think of all the things you love. And those are the things that that recharge your batteries. It could be your things like sports, it could be swimming, it could be being out in the ocean, um, it could be being out in the sun or whatever it is, whatever it is, you need to make time to do those things. Because when you do those things, you are in connection with your heart. When you're in connection with your heart, you're in connection with your higher self. When you're in connection with your higher self, you're in connection with the universe, with God. That's when you get your guidance and your messages. That's when you start operating on a different frequency. And the more you are struggling with life, the more you need to do that. You say, I don't have time to do that. You need to make time because that is what it means to love yourself. And you need to love yourself like your life depends on it. I learned the hard way. I learned by not doing it, by dimming my light to the point where my energy went so negative that I got cancer. You don't need an illness to give you permission to do that. So, so all you have to do, it's so simple. Think of yourself as a light bulb with a rechargeable battery and your job, your only job, is to shine that bulb as brightly as you can. And when you do that, when you do that, your very presence illuminates other people. You're not helping people by, uh, by being dark, by your bulb being switched off. You're really not. You think that, oh, I'm being selfless and, and I'm helping people all the time and I don't want to do anything for myself. And you think you're helping people. But when your bulb goes really dim, you're not helping anyone, not even yourself. But when your bulb is bright, you illuminate the way for everyone, including yourself, including the people who may discriminate against you. The only way to change them is by being a bright light yourself and shining your light bright wherever you go. And, and I want to go into the questions now. And then just before I do though, I just wanna mention something. So I, uh, many people who've read Dying to Be Me, I know a lot of you have read it, I still get people saying to me, I didn't even know you wrote a second book, which I did. I wrote the second book, What If This Is Heaven, some time ago. And What If This Is Heaven was actually written to answer some of these tough questions. And originally, when I wrote What If This Is Heaven, the subtitle that I put was, then why does it feel like hell? And several people actually advised me not to put hell in the subtitle. And so because I changed the subtitle, a lot of people have misconceptions or misunderstandings of what this book is about. So I just wanted to clarify that actually the book, What If This Is Heaven, is actually about how to create a life of heaven in a life that feels like hell. And what I'm trying to say is that I am fully aware that there are people who are struggling. And, but you know, I am fully aware because I was there, I know. But right now, because I am so, um, I, am, I am so invested in just turning or living life from the inside out and not letting the outer world dictate who I am on, uh, who I am on the inside, and I get, I tune inward and realize my true potential, that's how I turned my life around. And I had to commit myself to doing it. That's how my life turned around. That's how Wayne Dyer discovered my story. That's how he put me on the world stage. It didn't happen because I was a drained, dimmed bulb that, that let the outside world dictate who I was. It happened when I realized I am not the person the outside world is telling me I am. I am someone much more powerful, much greater, and that's what I want you to see in yourself. So thank you for listening and let's go to your questions. And today I have my husband Danny with his wonderfully deep baritone voice asking me the questions, not beautiful sweet Milena's voice today. <laughs> 
The first question that came up was from Lori, and she says, I just found out my lymphoma has returned. How can I make this a time for spiritual growth? Oh, Lori, first of all, if you were here, I'd give you a big, a big hug right now. So I'm sending you cyber hugs. So here's what I would like you to do. I have a video on uh, YouTube that's called what I would do, what I, I would do knowing what I know now. It's something like that. And it's about what I would do today, uh, knowing what I know today, if I was dealing with that illness. So I'd like you to check out that video because in there I talk about how I would deal with an illness if I, um, if I was dealing with one today. I, st I do this for every minor ailment that comes up right now. And so the first thing I do is, and lymphoma is one that is um, really the people who get lymphoma, leukemia, and cancers like that, that uh, are people who are super sensitive, who are empathetic, who are there for everyone else except themselves, who have taken on everyone else's problems as though they're their own. We who get these kinds of illnesses are uh, we are prone to doing that, to being there for everyone. So the first thing I would ask you to do is ask yourself, where have I said yes when I mean no? What have I taken on that is not mine? And start letting go of those things. Please check out that video and please start learning to receive and doing more things for yourself and start shining that light brightly. When you do that, you will start feeling more energy at your disposal. So really, I want you to start doing that and I think that will help you a lot. Um, for everyone else, this doesn't apply to you, for everyone else, I want you to know that if you are helping people who are dealing with illnesses and so on, everybody is at their own level, at their own stage and will take on what feels right. So this goes for you as well, Lori, that take on what feels right for you. Don't do things out of fear, do it out of love. And so for those of you who are caring for people who have illnesses, don't put pressure on those who are going through an illness. Don't treat it like a battle. Don't treat your body like a battleground and, and your illness is a battle that needs to be won. No, go inward and take care of yourself. Nurture yourself. Shine your light bright. Do what you need to do. Learn to receive. Learn that you're an empath. Learn that you've taken on more than you should. Things like that. And please, please check out my videos. And for those of us who have gone, who have passed on, remember they did not lose the battle because maybe those of us who are, maybe me who made it, maybe I'm the one that lost the battle because you know, it really was beautiful on the other side. So thank you for your question. And I'm ready for another one. Here's a question that's on a slightly different tangent. Patricia asks, how is the movie based on Dying to Be Me going? Oh, great. It's, um, so we are, um, so there are script writers. So the people who are working on it right now, they've got script writers, but it's, uh, it's so slow going that it can be pretty frustrating, even for me. Um, there was a lot of time spent looking for people, looking for script writers. So it still feels like it's at the early stage but um, the producers have assured me that once the script is done, it's going to speed up and the script should be done in the next two to three weeks and I'll keep you all posted. Rene asks, how do I get my 12 year old daughter to love herself? That is a great question. So I have together with Angie DeMuro written a children's book which we will put the link to it. I don't have one to hold up this minute, but we have written a children's book specifically designed for children to learn to love themselves. And, um, and this is because I actually want, uh, because knowing what I know today, I would bring up children, not that I have children, but I think that school was detrimental for me because I was bullied at school. Children need to know that um, they are love, 
Children need to learn to shine their light brightly. They need to learn to embrace themselves. They need to realize that they can follow their dreams and their imagination. One of the problems that we, um, that our, par our paradigm does is that it instills fear into children way too young. The fear of failing, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of fitting in. And children learn way too early to get their, um, uh, to get their information of who they are or their identity from the outside world. As parents, we can teach children to tune in inside. So number one, I would teach children that do not get your identity from the outside world. It needs to come in from inside. Their self-worth, their love needs to come in from the inside. But number two, and this is really important, children learn from their parents by absorbing them energetically. So it's the parent's job to love themselves. So here's the other thing. You know when I said that when we shine our light brightly, when our, light, when our bulb is bright, we enlighten everybody else around us. As parents, we have to stop worrying so much about our children or chasing them or fearing for them. We need to shine our own light and charge our own battery so that our children are enlightened by our light, not by our fears. When, you're, when you don't charge your own battery as a parent and your light is dimmed, you operate on fear. And so this is a, this is a good segue for me to add, what happens when your light is dim? What happens is that you operate on fear. When your light is bright, you operate on love, you operate on joy, you operate on passion, you operate on enlightening other people and lighting the way for other people. When your light is dim, you can't see the way and you're taking instructions from other people. You're actually taking feedback from other people and you start to fear, you operate on fear because you fear if I don't please those people, they're not going to give me the guidance. But when you're recharging your own battery, you're in fact lighting the way for other people. So as a parent, your job is to shine your own light bright. I feel that about doctors and nurses. If doctors and nurses learn to recharge their own batteries, their very presence would do half the healing for them. And they wouldn't need to work as hard as well because just their presence would already feel healing to the patients. So thank you for that question. And we're gonna put a link to the book in the comments to uh, the book called Love, A Story About Who You Truly Are. It's a children's book. It's, um, uh, it's co-authored with Angie DeMuro and um, she's done some beautiful, beautiful illustrations for it. That's very heartwarming. I'd love for you to check it out. So yes, I'm ready for the next question. Okay, Is, do we have time for one more question? Uh, yes, where are we at? Let's go with at least one more, yes. Okay, this is a question from Solel. And Solel says, my mother was very bad to me. She always told me I was a very wrong person. Today, I have a lot of difficulties not feeling bad about that. How can I pass through that when it is your mother that is cruel to you? Solel also apologizes that English is not her first language. Your English sounded perfect to me. Um, so again, I'm so sorry about what you have been through. And what I would ask you to do though, is to see if you can do what it takes to focus on the present and the future and leave the past behind. So there are a lot of exercises which are already available online but but um you know but people sometimes get lost and don't know what they need to do so what i feel would be right for you solen is to focus on whatever it takes to know that you are not the person um you know the issue was your mother's issue not your issue and it's never too late to to actually heal that inner child but one of the things that I actually um, hesitate to tell people is to keep going back to healing their inner child and healing their past 
If you feel you need to do it, I don't want to stop people from doing it. If you feel you need to do it and if you feel you need to go back and revisit it and recreate it in a different way, absolutely do it. But do it with the purpose of creating a better present moment. If you can do it with the intention of creating a better present moment, then by all means, go back and visit the past and heal your inner child, the child that you were in the past, the child that um, your mother made you feel you were. But know that the issue was your mother's issue, not your issue. And do it with the purpose of having a better present in order to create a better future. One of the things I worry about is that uh, many of us fall into the trap of actually wallowing in that past and using that as a tool to get what we want in our present moment. We use that, and I'm not saying this is what you are doing, absolutely not, Soleil. I'm just, uh, all I'm saying for the other listeners is you need to differentiate between are you using the pain from your past as a tool to get you uh, to get you things, to get you favors, to get you liked, to get pity, things like that? Or are you visiting the past just to heal it so that you can shine your light bright in the present? Because nothing from your past can stop you from shining your light bright right now. Nothing can stop you because we always have access to that. We always have access to our greatness, to God, to the universe, to the power and energy that's available to all of us. We always have that. So Soleil, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for what you went through and I want you to know that your mother is not you and she, what she did to you cannot prevent you from accessing that today. And if you need to heal it, go back and heal it but remember, heal it and change it in your mind as a lesson that helps you to be who you are today. It contributed to who you are today. So thank you for that. So shall we do just one more and then we can wrap it up? In my case, I'm going to give you one comment okay. and one question just so I can get my voice on this a little bit more. <laughs> they love your voice, I'm sure they do. I'm sure you're not telling me the feedback where everyone is saying, oh my gosh, Danny's got such a great voice. I love his accent, I love his voice. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I can't even see the comments, but I can imagine people are saying that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> DP has a comment for you. Hi, DP. Who says, we have the children's book called Love. It's brilliant. But will you be doing one more for older kids? I will. And in fact, I have. So Angie is going to be helping me do a couple more books on different things. And there is somebody else, a guy named Keith Malinsky, who's working on another children's book on a different theme. But this one is more... Um, it actually, uh, so this one will be for older kids. It uh, goes a little deeper because it even touches, I feel it touches on losing a loved one in your life and knowing that your loved one is still there, but in a different form. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful book that he's currently working on, which I hope to launch sometime either later this year or early next year. But we will be doing many more children's books of kids of different ages, because you know, I what I really wanna do, and I wanna make this clear, um, I'm not actually here to sell books. The reason I sell books is because it helps to get the word out in a way that's cheap and affordable for people. But I'm here because I don't want people to go through what I went through. So I create so many things, YouTube videos, <clears throat> events, um, books, all kinds of things, because I'm trying to change the way people view the world, their lives, the way they view illnesses. So absolutely. Um, the shorter answer is yes, we will be creating more children's books. <clears throat> so thank you for that question. The final question is from Judy, and it's a long one. It says, Judy says, people often feel scared to make changes, such as changing their jobs, leaving their partners, or moving away. 
from where they live in order to find their own happiness. But what would help them believe that the universe is on their side? How can we trust the love of the universe will guide us? That's a great question. I'm glad you answered it. You don't have to change a thing in your life. So wherever you are in your life, your first focus is how can I shine my light brighter from where I am now? What are the things I need to do to make me charge my batteries from where I am now without changing, uh, without changing my relationship, without changing where I live, without changing my job? What can I do to enhance my life? And here's the thing. It could be saying no to things that you've been saying yes to, but I've wished you said no. It could be letting go of certain things where you were just doing them, not because you had to or your, or your income depends on it, but because you were afraid of displeasing people. So here's something that really, really drains your battery. It's the fear of displeasing people, the fear of failing, the fear of saying no. I want you to visit these things and say, okay, I don't need to quit my job. I don't need to leave my relationship. I don't need to move house. I don't need to do any of those big things. But where have I been saying yes when I meant no? Because that depletes your battery and makes your light grow dim. So all I want you to do, so for everybody listening in, your exercise this week is how do I shine my light brighter? Let me look at where I'm draining my battery, where my light is getting dim. Am I saying yes when I mean no? Am I taking on things that are not mine? Am I not doing enough of the things that charge my battery that make me feel good? Whether it's medi medi meditating, not medicating, meditating, soaking in a tub, reading a book, going for a walk, laughing with friends, having fun, playing with my children, running with my puppy, going to the beach, whatever it is. This week, I want you to focus on charging your battery so that your light can be brighter, regardless of your life circumstances and situation. As you do this more and more, you will see small changes, then bigger changes, then even bigger changes, and then it will become easier and easier to make bigger leaps. And that's what it means to love yourself. That was the commitment I made to myself after I came back from dying from cancer. That is what healed me and saved my life and brought me to where I am today, where I love my life. I love what I do. I love every day that I'm on this earth. So thank you all so much for tuning in. I love all of you. I really do. Um, and thank you, and I will see you all really soon. Bye.